Good evening, race fans. Uh, welcome along to Pirates TV coverage of tonight's Championship Cup meeting, Knockout Cup between the Wessex Marine Pirates and the Stellar Monarchs from Edinburgh. I'm Rob Dyer. I'll be presenting and commentating for you here at Paul Stadium this evening in the absence of Scott Mitchell, who's away on other business this evening. So we're looking at uh, Cup Round 1, which is a quarter final in actual fact, between the Pirates and the, the Monarchs and uh, both clubs come into the meeting rather short on race time as groups together. Pirates, of course, with just one meeting here at Paul Stadium on Good Friday when they disposed of the Oxford Cheetahs in the BSN series. And the Monarchs, well, they're similarly placed as well. They had a rain off up at Glasgow. They've completed an away fixture at Berwick in the BSN series, which they went down by just four points on. So uh, two fairly rusty sides coming together to uh, do battle here. Second leg of this one is up at Armadale a week on Friday. So the usual form replies, try and get as big a lead as you possibly can if you're a Pirates fan here at the stadium. And uh, Monarchs, of course, trying to keep it as close as possible before a trip up over the borders next week. It looks like we've got two full-strength sides, the complete one to seven of both the Pirates and the Monarchs tonight. Uh, that's good news, and uh, we're looking forward to what looks to be a good meeting in prospect. The day's been nice and kind weather-wise. Blue skies, light breeze, and the track prep taking place most of the afternoon and continuing now as we head towards the race time at 7.30. So it's cup action. Enjoy it with us on Pirates TV. And uh, we'll head over now to see if we can find somebody to have a chat to in the pits. OK, thanks, Rob. Right, we're in the pits with Josh Pickering from the Edinburgh Monarchs uh, Knockout Cup action tonight here at Poole. Um, a track that you love and uh, you've gone well here in the past. Yeah, for sure, mate. It's a bit of a uh, tricky track pool and you do have to get dialed in around here. And I've, I feel like I've been here half a dozen times now and, you know, the last few times I've been here, I've enjoyed my visit and uh, I've managed to score some points. So hopefully that's not going to change tonight. I know we're at the start of the season here, but you've had a couple of matches so far with the team. Um, how's the team shaping up from your point of view? You know, you've got some experienced riders in there that were with you last year and some new ones as well. So uh, what's it like in the camp? Yeah, at the moment, I think um, all the boys are just very eager to get going. It has been a very stop-start season. Um, we only done uh, six or seven heats, I think, at Glasgow, and it got rained out, unfortunately. And then we went to Berwick and put in a, a, a solid team performance, I thought, there. And... Um, just now in the current moment, again, we've had no home matches, which has been a bit of an issue, but I feel like the way the team's been built the whole way throughout, we are quite strong and very competitive team for this year. So, um, and that's just home and away, I feel like. Anywhere we can sort of go, I feel like the, the guys that's been here now, like we've had Lassie, Kai, Paco, they've all done three years together, I think. Um, I've been here for seven or something like that. So uh, I feel like everyone's settled in in a way and they all understand what their job is at task and um, hopefully they can all ride at their ability and, and if that can happen then we should be able to push the Pirates all the way. I mean that's definitely something you want this year because I know we spoke to you last year, the end of last year, and it was frustrating for you guys because you had a great team there but it just wasn't working out you know, for one reason or another. Yeah. So like you say, you've got the team, you've got it again this year and hopefully if they can gel you can really put some strong performances on. Yeah, it's, to be honest mate, like things people say what's team spirit like and things like that to be honest you don't need to be in each other's pocket it's just as long as you get on in a way um like the, the guys at sheffield for example like we all speak together we're all mates or whatever but we only see each other at the track and that's it but we we all put in an individual performance and that's what's got to come down to tonight obviously we've got to enjoy ourselves and have fun that that is most important but um as far as the the, the boys if if everyone can just pull their part and, and, and do what they you know they are more than capable of doing, I um, I'm very confident. I've got a good feeling about this year for Edinburgh to be honest. So every every year team's been built like there is a lot of promise and 
maybe we've been let down in certain areas. There's been times where I haven't pulled my weight and other riders um, as well. But I feel like with the, the team that is currently there now, and as long as everyone stays injury free and, and enjoys coming to turn up to race, I feel like uh, yeah, all, all seven boys can all get in and score points and, and put us in a good position for 8.15. Well, that's the team. What about yourself? What about the form that you're bringing in? Because you mentioned there the uh, riding for Sheffield. So you, you've had some matches yourself. You've yeah. got into the groove for the start of the season. Uh, are you happy with your form? Yeah, I'd, always you can improve. It don't matter what it is. You're always looking for them little things. But uh, all in all, it's only fine, fine teething, I suppose. Just got to iron out the creases and, and move on from that. But, you know, there is a a long time throughout the year back home in Aussie when I, I'm fortunate enough I get to do a few meetings compared to some of the guys over here but I don't do a whole lot of riding so the the whole mentality side of things of being away from your job for near six months and then coming back like it takes a little bit of settling into but um, for me right now I'm just yeah I'm, I'm keen to get going I am I'm feeling confident on the bike and uh, hopefully my scores show that. Well, we will let you go so you can get going. Thank uh, you. Have a great night, stay safe, and uh, yeah, ride fast. Cheers, thanks. All right then, so Sam, back at Paul, second meeting for us here at home, and uh, good weather, good track, good opposition. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, it makes a difference from obviously the last meeting we had. It was if it was going to be on or off or not. Um, but no, yeah, it's good. Obviously, Edinburgh are a very strong team, so hopefully we can... Uh, do a similar thing to Oxford, but obviously that was a thing that might be a one-off. But as long as the whole team score, I think we can do definitely upset people at home because I think we're definitely strong enough at home. We just spoken to uh, to uh, Edinburgh's uh, Josh, and uh, they're pretty confident tonight of, of going out there and, and giving you boys a good run for your money, if you like, for the first leg. It's important to uh, to do well, take a good lead up there because they're strong on their track. Yeah, obviously Edinburgh is such a tricky track. Um, it's sort of if you rode rode there for a few years, you'd be good there. So. I think none of us have actually rode there, so as in we've practically rode there, it's not race room. So I think it's going to be, it will be hard to go there, but it's still doable. We just need a good start tonight, so we have a big enough, big enough lead to go there and then see what we can do there. Def not saying we can't be close or win enough win it. We're we're a strong enough team. So well, I've got to say you were guesting up at uh, Glasgow the other day, and you did have a bit of an off. It was pretty nasty, but how are you feeling now? Yeah, it was all good. There was nothing seriously wrong. It was just my, mainly my er my error. Um, it was a good ride with Royce Line, but uh, no, I'm still learning. I'm, I'm happy with how I rode. It didn't score many points, but I had four very good rides. I was in, um, amongst it, which is sort of something I've struggled for the last couple, well, last year. So and it's good to be amongst it, and then um, we'll just oh, hopefully tonight is good, and then we'll just go from there. It's great because even in the uh, the few meetings we've had at the start of the season here, we see that you, you're gating well. Yeah. You're competing well, you've got good speed, and you're driving all the different lines. So really, you've got a nice consistent of all the little components there to uh, to be able to kick on in all areas. Definitely. I've always been a good racer. I've always known that. It's just the start, and it's always let me down. Um, so like Especially last year, going to Birmingham, which is a gators track, it's, there's no ifs or buts with that. It is a gators track. And it was hard for me because I think I could have shown, I couldn't have shown what I actually could have done. Uh, but coming here, where it is it also uh, the track's good as well. Obviously, it is a racist track, and not just that. I was also making starts, which makes a life a lot easier. And um, like you said, that race of heat seven with a Cameron heat, whatever it was, it made a decent start, which put me in a good enough position. And then yeah. that just from there, and it was good from there. Well, over the winter, the guys here have worked so hard on the track. They've really ironed out all those bumps and ruts and bits and pieces. Is it is it feeling as smooth out there as it's looking for us? Yeah, there's obviously always a one bump going into one. That's probably the tractor comes in and out, so you can't help that. Um, but no, I thought it was smooth last year, in all fairness. I don't know if they had a problem last year or the year before. But they had, I know they had a big problem with the track, but obviously I never rode it before that. Um, but the track is a lot better than it was last year. Nothing was bad with it last year, but yeah, they've worked so hard over the winter to get the sort of, if there was any bumps, bumps gone, they've added more dirt, they've added a bit more of a banking, ever so slightly, but it makes a huge difference, and I have to say, the racing was very good here on the Good Friday. Um, away, like, Oxford rode very good, actually, I thought. They just, we just sort of was better on the night, and they sort of, we knew the track more, I'd say, and yeah, we adapted better to it. Well, go out there, do well for us, Pirates, and uh, give the fans something to cheer about. Let's uh, get a win and a healthy lead, fingers crossed. Hopefully, and we'll see where we end up. Cheers. Thank you. OK, thanks, Andy. Some interesting views there from uh, Pit Lane. Before we get going with the meeting proper tonight, let's have a look at the team lineups as the Wessex Marine Pirates tackle the Stellar Monarchs. 
kick off with the uh, Pirates and uh, as usual Richard Lawson will open the meeting for the Pirates in the number one race jacket and he'll be partnered by uh, Tobias Thompson, the new Dane into the Pirate side for 2024. Uh, Richard Lawson of course who's been riding in the Premiership so has some track time. Tobias Thompson who has very little track time so far this year so it'll be interesting to see how Tobias settles in. The middle order, the engine room, Tom Brennan at number three, the uh, ever-improving young English rider, uh, partnered with Zach Cook, uh, strong middle order pairing for the Pirates, as we saw last time out here when the Pirates took on the Oxford Cheetahs. Ben Cook rides in the number five berth to skip of the side in 2024, and uh, he took the side to a winning position against the Cheetahs, no doubt looking to do the same tonight and build up a good advantage for the second leg. Down at number six, the uh, very promising young English rider Sam Hagen, who's uh, shown some good form this year already, not only here at Paul, but uh, in a couple of guest appearances out and about around the country. And down at uh, the number seven spot is young Englishman Max Perry in his first season of championship racing. And uh, he'll be racing off against another young English rider, Max James, over on the Edinburgh side. We'll come to them in a moment. Neil Middleditch, of course, is the team manager for the Pirates. Looking at the visiting Monarchs, well, uh, the ever-exciting Josh Pickering leads the line there for the Scottish side and certainly looking forward to seeing Josh around the pool circuit. Always goes well here. And uh, a very forthright character if we get a chance to speak to him. Riding at number two is the Norwegian Lasse Fredriksen, one club man, always been with the Monarchs since he came to the UK. Similarly with uh, Kai Thompson at number three, an Aussie rider who has always based himself as an Edinburgh Monarch and a rider with uh, bags of potential as the uh, season unfolds. Riding at number four, he's taken on the captaincy of the Monarchs this year is uh, Paco Castagna, the Italian stallion. He leads the Italian championship at the moment, so uh, he's hit some good form early in 2024. New into the Monarchs lineup, number five, Justin Sedgman, wily character, been around the tracks for many seasons now, and uh, certainly no slouch at Paul. He's won races here before, so he could be a key player in tonight's meeting. And talking about key players, well, the reserves are likely to have an impact on what happens overall tonight. With the Monarchs at number six is Max James, his first season in championship racing, 17 years old, a bit like Max Perry on the pool side. And he's going to be partnered by the uh, experienced Connor Coles at number seven. Connor coming back into the Monarchs lineup after a year at Berwick last year. John Campbell is the team manager, as usual, for the Monarchs. Referee for the meeting, Simon Humphrey Kennett from Kent, and Bias Technology are the meeting sponsors. Well, good evening, everybody. Joining us on Pirates TV for tonight's Championship Quarter Final Cup fixture between the uh, Paul Wessex Marine Pirates and the Edinburgh Stella Monarchs. And uh, ahead of parade at 7:30, we just give you a quick shot of the. Uh, crowd here at Wimborne Road building up nicely towards start time and there on screen the respective uh, number ones Josh Pickering and Richard Lawson of course both very established riders at this level and we pan across to the Monarchs just uh, getting themselves ready to come out on parade this evening of course it's uh, a long journey for those boys from Scotland something like 430 miles on the road to get to Paul and no doubt exactly the same going back home later on tonight and uh, Obviously, they'll be looking to uh, put together a good performance with the second leg at Armadale uh, a week on Friday. Connor Coles there, riding number seven. Um, some would call him a journeyman these days. He's been in the sport for uh, several seasons now, many seasons mainly, and uh, has seen action at all sorts of tracks. But uh, at reserve, he could be a potent weapon in the Monarch's armour. And... Uh, Speaking to Connor earlier on tonight, it was uh, good to see that he's in fine spirits. And uh, wife Kirsty and their two young daughters are down at Paul today as well to uh, make it a real family atmosphere. There's Ty Kai Thompson, number three, the Aussie. He's uh, solely an Edinburgh rider and uh, one who's got bags of potential and uh, just needs the break to uh, make it actually show. 
don't forget that you can contact uh, us through all the usual social media aspects as shown on the bottom of the screen and uh, whilst we're looking down through the pit lane I'd just say uh, good evening and welcome aboard Scott Mitchell Scott your normal commentator of course unfortunately not here tonight uh, he's away uh, on a darts commitment but I know he'll be watching in from his hotel room and he'll be looking there at number three Tom Brennan the uh, young Great Britain international who is away at the weekend representing uh, GB in the Euros under 23 tournament in Pardo Beach in uh, Czechoslovakia where the GB squad ran a second place and in focus there number seven Max Perry new rider coming into championship this year and of course he suffered a very bad crash at the end of 2023 but uh, great to see that he's out on the bike and uh, scoring points not only at Paul but of course over with the Edinburgh Academy up there at Armadale where he's uh, doubling his rides up and uh, to the right of the screen rider number two for the Pirates there uh, Tobias Thompson rather a surprise signing for the Pirates at the start of the season but uh, he showed last time that he was at the stadium that uh, he certainly knows the uh, quickest way around this track and uh, he could be the Pirates' secret weapon as the season unfolds. And in the background you can hear the uh, music playing and we welcome on to the centre green for the parade the Edinburgh Stellar Monarchs and uh, led out by Josh Pickering there who uh, had such a successful end to 2023 is team in the Premiership Sheffield uh, clinching the champions title there and uh, Josh a very forthright young man and always good to hear his views on Speedway whether it be good bad or indifferent so there's your Monarchs coming across and uh, they're going to receive the applause of a very full grandstand here on a sunny sunny uh, April evening here at Wimborne Road the uh, light fluffy clouds right up in the sky there allowing the sun to blaze on through let's go over to Nigel Leahy our centre green presenter who will talk you through the Monarchs lineup. up already thwarted a couple of times with the weather they lost two of their opening fixtures finally getting off to a start at Berwick in their PSN group uh, just 11 days ago so this uh, the Monarchs and the second appearance of the season Four of last year's team will be returning for the Monarchs. And this, of course, is the first leg of the quarter-final with a return in Scotland on Friday the 3rd of May. Well, uh, good to have them in town. And uh, as they line up once again for introductions, one more time, please, give them a big well warm welcome to Wimborne Road for the Emperor Stella Monarchs. Taking his place in the side at number seven, moving north from Berwick after scooping their Rider of the Year award last year, Connor Coles. <laughs> number six, paying his first visit to Wimborne Road, Monarch's new kid on the block, Max James. <laughs> number five, swapping his place at Birmingham for a fourth term in Scotland this year, Justin Sedman. Number four, taking on the captain's role in his third consecutive year at Armadale, Paco Castanga. <laughs> Number three, another returning north of the border, capable of taking points off the Pirates tonight, Kai Thompson. <laughs> and number two, remains in that berth after boosting his average in 2023, Lassie Fredrickson. And a change of direction has brought the Monarchs 2023 captain back to the lineup at number one, Josh Pickering. <laughs> All right, stand by to receive our own uh, men back in town. What a night it was as we opened our season against the Oxford Cheetahs with an emphatic win on Good Friday. It's time to show them that you approve of their performance that night. Get behind them again and please welcome your very own Paul Wessex Marine Pyra! And the Pirates on parade led out uh, in uh, 
very strident fashion by Ben Cook. And with him, Richard Lawson just behind, of course, and then the uh, other pirates with their national flags as they come across the centre green. Second home meeting of the season for the Pirates. Last time out, big win against uh, Oxford Cheetahs. This time it's cup action, and how will they fare? Well, time will tell, and it's uh, a very smartly turned out set of Pirates who hand their flags over on the centre green and come to the gate to inspect the positions. Nigel, over to you with continued introductions. Trophy, of course, which they are the holders of. But tonight they put that on hold as they wait and uh, take part in knockout cup action for the first time in 2024. Serious business. Two legs, of course, 30 heats to take place. The first 15 tonight. Always getting a final look at start line before we go into action and before we introduce them. Have a look at team talk. I dare say they're discussing what gate positions they will select if they win the coin toss in a moment's time. All right, boys have their team talk going back into line. Let's welcome them back on track then at number seven. Having made a great debut at Easter from the number seven berth, Pirates newcomer, Max Perry. <laughs> number six, rider of the night on Good Friday with a stonking debut paid at 11, Sam Hagen. Number five, picking up right where he left off in 2023, Captain Cook, Ben Cook. <laughs> Number four, laid down his intentions for the year, finishing second top scorer against the Cheetahs, Zach Cook. <laughs> Number three, teamed up with Zach to hammer in two maximum heat wins last time, Tom Brown. Number two, he's already won our hearts with bags of spirit, plenty of personality. There's more to come from Tobias Thompson. And absolutely unbeatable in our opener with a full 15 point maximum. Number one, Richard Lawson. And the two captains on the line, along with Morris, going to spin the coin. Tails, Paco calls, and it is Tails. Pa Paco's shooting one and three for the Mites. All right, ready, let's go racing. So there we are, it's uh, first blood, if you like, to the Monarchs. Paco calls correctly, takes skates one and three in a heat number one of this quarterfinal knockout cup fixture. Pirates, of course, We'll then have choice of gates when it comes down to heat number 15. I'll just uh, show you on screen a little bit of the uh, warm-up action between uh, all of the guys as they prep ready to go racing in heat number one. So Tom Brennan there, the last rider out on track and uh, now he's heading back towards the pits gate as the uh, riders go in, dust themselves down, ready to go racing in heat number one. Heat number one will uh, have the Monarchs racing from the inside starting positions. 
with Lasse Fredrickson and uh, Josh Pickering taking on Richard Lawson and Tobias Thompson. You just follow the riders into the pits there. That's uh, Tom Brennan just going in. And Richard Lawson there just uh, getting himself together, ready to go in uh, heat number one. Neil Middleditch, the uh, Pirates team manager there, just uh, pacing pit lane, which is uh, so uh, common on uh, Neil. He's uh, always moving up and down, uh, keeping his eye on all the riders and uh, things that may be happening with them so that uh, he's on top of his game all the time. And uh, here's Tom Brennan marking up his uh, program just to indicate uh, the helmet colours and the gate positions that he'll be taking in his nominated rides. A little bit of adjustment there for uh, Zach Cook on uh, both machines. And number five there, Ben Cook. He's uh, been uh, doing a great job for Bellevue up there in the uh, Premiership over the uh, course of the first month of the season. Uh, just getting his uh, gear together, ready to go in his first race, which is going to be heat number three. Up in the box tonight, referee from uh, Canterbury is uh, Simon Humphrey Kennett. Second meeting of the season for Simon. He was uh, on duty over at Ipswich earlier in the year and uh, his uh, second one is here and I think he's got uh, another one coming up uh, at Oxford in about three weeks time. So uh, not as many meetings as they used to do referees but uh, all fully qualified and uh, happy to take control of Speedway no doubt wherever it may be. Here's Josh Pickering. Helmet on, goggles out of the box and uh, ready to run ball. And whilst Josh gets ready, we've got Lassa Fredrickson in the yellow helmet there out on track, making his way round to the start for heat number one. Talking to people around the stadium before the meeting, uh, seem fairly confident that it would be a home win, a comfortable one at that. Looking back over the last five meetings that Edinburgh have been to Pool, it's uh, averaged out at Pool 54, Edinburgh 36. No doubt the Monarchs will be hoping to do a little bit better than that tonight over this two-leg fixture in the KO Cup. So, coming up on screen, we've got the lineup for heat number one. Gate number one in the yellow helmet colour for the Monarchs, Lassa Fredrickson. Next to him in blue for the Pirates, that's going to be Tobias Thompson. On gate number three in white, Edinburgh number one, Josh Pickering. And in gate number four in red, digging the dirt, is Richard Lawson. So there we are, short lineup for heat number one. That's a Fredrickson just in shot there, and uh, next to him, Danish rider Tobias Thompson getting themselves ready to go. This is Richard Lawson in shot, just pulling up to the tapes now. So the engine noise starts to rise. Riders watching the tapes. Starley Marshall moves away, takes the release, and away they go to the first corner. And Richard Lawson has made the best of that one, and he leads it going down the back straight. That's a Fredrickson hits second, and Josh Pickering moves through to pick off the rider in blue, Tobias Thompson for the Pirates. So, uh, untidy first corner for Josh Pickering, but uh, he's managed to work his way up into position and uh, alongside Lassa Fredrickson, they'll cover that one off for a uh, 3-3. Richard Lawson, well, he's away with a mixer at the front of the field, but it's those two monarchs who were at one stage side by side, who now sees Josh Pickering pick up the chase in pursuit of uh, Richard Lawson, but uh, it's gonna be a long way to go to get that one in. So uh, 
as we come down to the last lap and down the back straight Richard Lawson there in the red helmet comes around a car park turn and over the line we'll call them home red white yellow and blue red white yellow and blue a win for Richard Lawson for the Pirates and a shared heat in the first race of the night Richard Lawson out of the gate like a rocket and uh, it was tapes to flag for the Pirates number one so we just wait for the official result to come up on screen for you and there you go it looks like this it's a win for the rider in red for the Pirates Richard Lawson second in white for the Monarchs was Josh Pickering third in yellow also for the Monarchs is Lassa Fredrickson Tobias Thompson was your fourth finisher points in the heat three to each team and that's the way we stand after the first race here this evening 58.60 the race winning time we pan back to uh, pits and we can see there that uh, Connor Coles is uh, first out on track in the yellow helmet for the Monarchs. He's coming round to tapes and he'll be in gate position number four. Here's Connor on screen, just uh, taking up his position next to the safety fence. In the white helmet, just approaching us there, Max James, first appearance here at the stadium. Be interesting to see how he goes. Your lineup then for heat number two, Connor Coles for the Monarchs rides in the yellow helmet colour out of gate number four. Next to him in the blue helmet colour for the Pirates, gate number three is Max Perry. Next to Max on gate number two, white helmet colour for the Monarchs is Max James. And in gate number one, the red helmet colour for the Pirates is Sam Hagen. So there we are. Point shared after the first race, all to ride for as the meeting progresses and the reserves race uh, could give us an indication on how things will pan out during the course of the evening. We're just waiting for the riders to settle on the line. Two minute clock is ticking down to somewhere around 40 seconds at the moment, so uh, plenty of time for the riders to settle in and be ready to go as soon as they're all in line. Sam Hagen there in shot. Pirates number six uh, performed well last time out here at the stadium. Double figure score. We'll see if that can be repeated this time round. Start Marshall moves away. Tapes released. Away they go to the first corner. And uh, yep, it looks like Sam Hagen on the inside line, the red helmet uh, going well. He's being challenged on the outside by Max James in white. Good work there from Max James. Now, what can Hagen do to uh, repeat the dose? Well, we'll have to wait and see because uh, it's Max James uh, who's leading it out. Sam Hagen, we know, will keep pushing all the way. Max Perry's moved into a very useful third position there ahead of Connor Coles. Uh, at the moment, well, the young man from Edinburgh, Max James, doing a fine job for his team out the front. The rider in white there pushing on for home. Sam Hagen picks up the pace now and uh, looks like he's trying the outside run around Max James. We know he ducks that outside run but drops it on bend number one. It's going to hand a heat advantage to the visitors and uh, hats off to this man, the rider in white, as he comes over the line as your race winner will call them home, a white, a blue, yellow. And Sam Hagen is up but uh, stranded on bend number one. So not what the Pirates were hoping for in that one but well done Edinburgh Monarchs and particularly to Max James battling his way there up to the front and taking a race win for his side in the second heat here this evening let's go with the official result of heat number two and it's a great piece of work for the rider in white for the Monarchs Max James winning points three for Max in that one Max Perry was the rider in blue. He picked up the second place for the Pirates. And the third man home was Connor Coles in yellow for the Monarchs. Sam Hagen 
falls at the back of the field and fails to finish. 4-2 heat advantage to the uh, Monarchs in that one. And uh, they take an early lead at five points to the Pirates and seven to the Monarchs. Race awarded, so no time in that one. And we can see there that uh, as the riders sprang away from the gate, Sam Hagen looked to have made a good start, but uh, Max James there battling hard around the outside. Um, keeps a nice tidy line, enough to hold Sam Hagen back. Max Perry had uh, dived through in front of Connor Coles, and uh, it looked at this stage for all the world that uh, it would be a shared heat, but uh, Sam Hagen trying as hard as he could, unfortunately, came a cropper and uh, it handed an advantage to the Monarchs. So, uh, advantage Monarchs as we go to heat number three, about a minute and a half left on the two minute clock. And this time round, well, we're going to see uh, the engine rooms of both sides out and about. As we look across the gate, riding in the red helmet colour, we'll go from gate number four, for the Pirates is Tom Brennan. Inside of him, rider in the yellow helmet for the Monarchs is uh, their skipper Paco Castagna. Then on gate number two in blue for the Pirates, Zach Cook. And gate number one in white for the Monarchs is Kai Thompson. So promising race in store here with uh, four good quality riders at championship level out to do battle between one another. And maybe uh, gates one and three give a slight advantage to the Monarchs in this particular heat. We'll uh, have to see how as racing gets underway. So we're just waiting for uh, all the riders to come into line, being encouraged forward by uh, our start marshal. And it looks very much as if uh, everybody is up together. Started Marshall moves away, green lights on, takes the release, and away to the first bend. It's uh, Advantage Pirates here by the look of it with Zach Cook and Tom Brennan making the best of it. Cook at the front, Brennan in second, and uh, it's Kai Thompson in white reveals third place. So, good start for the Pirates there, got their noses in front over the first 30 metres and uh, asking Kai Thompson an awful lot to reel these two boys in when they get in the groove. So past they come with uh, Zach Cook leading the race out ahead of Tom Brennan with Kai Thompson and uh, Paco Castagna in the third and fourth positions for the Monarchs. Strong start from these boys for the Pirates and uh, it's going to be uh, a good side that puts uh, a heat advantage over these two in the early races. Let's call them home. Blue, red, white and yellow. Blue, red, white and yellow. And a 5-1 to the Pirates. Turns the Edinburgh Monks advantage upside down. And it means that we've got the Pirates now with uh, 10 points and the Monarchs on eight. So, uh, Pirates starting to find the gears by the look of it. Let's have a look what the official score line shows when it comes up. Double wheelie celebration from the pair of Pirates. There's your official result. A win for the rider in blue for the Pirates, Zach Cook. Second in red, also for the Pirates, Tom Brennan. Third in white for the Monarchs, Kai Thompson. Paco Castagna was the fourth finisher. 5-1, heat advantage to the Pirates. And as mentioned, Pirates now take a lead at 10 points to eight. 10 points to eight after three races. And a quick rerun here of uh, what happened from the start of uh, heat number three. And as the tapes go up, it's uh, nice wheels in line start there from both of those pirates. Zach Cook looking over his uh, right shoulder to see who's with him. It was in fact Tom Brennan, Tom lifting just a little bit, so changed the tactics a little. And uh, instead of Brennan coming round, Cook, Cook goes away with Brennan on his inside. We're on to heat number four. Two minute clock clicking down. And here comes the first 
showing on track tonight for the rider in white who is Justin Sedgman. Justin Sedgman, of course, comes from Mildura in Australia, just by the Yarra River there. And the family are big uh, supporters and sponsors and operators of that Mildura track. A move up from Birmingham to Edinburgh over the winter for Sedgy. Here comes your lineup for heat number four. Riding in red out of the uh, outside starting position, gate number four. Pirates captain is Ben Kirk. Next to him, Justin Sedgman in white for the Monarchs on gate three. Second appearance of the evening, gate number two, rider in blue is Max Perry for the Pirates. And on the inside box, yellow helmet for the Monarchs is going to be Connor Coles. Second ride of the night for Connor. So there we have it, those are your uh, competitors in uh, heat number three, two point advantage to the home side at the moment. And riders moving into position. Ben Cook there uh, looks to be a little angle towards that first corner. See what happens as they head off to the first bend. Uh, it's a good start from Justin Sedgman and Connor Coles as well, but uh, at the moment Sedgman has got the uh, clean air as he leads from uh, Ben Cook. Connor Coles runs in third place, Max Perry at the back. So Justin Sedgman doing a good job out front to uh, keep his advantage over Pirate skipper Ben Cook. Connor Coles tidy in third, Max Perry at the back. So uh, advantage this time to the Monarchs. They're going to close the score together by uh, the way it looks at the moment. Justin Sedgman here nice and tidy around the car park, Ben. Ben Cook pushing hard but not closing the gap. Connor Coles safe in third, Max Perry out the back. So very much uh, as from the gate, this one. Uh, but uh, Monarchs won't be worried about that. They'll be very happy to see their rider in white come home in front. So we'll call them home. White, red, yellow, blue. White, red, yellow, blue. Win there for Justin Sedgman ahead of Ben Cook and Connor Coles. Heat advantage for two in favour of the visitors. And after four races, scores are tied together at 12 to each team. So as you can see on screen, the uh, bike's being pushed back to base. Tapes are being uh, removed. So that would indicate we're going to have a track grade. Let's have a look at the official result of heat number four. And that went the way of uh, Justin Sedgman for the Monarchs. Very tidy gate and uh, very clean, tidy four laps. Second place, Ben Cook for the Pirates in red. Third to Connor Coles for the useful third place point there for the Monarchs. And Monarchs Perry, no score that time around for the Pirates. 4 2 to the visitors, and as we said, 12 points to Paul, 12 to Edinburgh. And the tractor's out to uh, do a little bit of grading, and we can look into uh, pit lane there and a chat between Ben Cook and Zach Cook there. Ben Obviously, uh, contemplating what uh, happened in that last one. And Max Perry, uh, sorry, Sam Hagen in a shot there with a nice uh, red shale patch down the blue side of those pirate Kevlers. Neil Miloditch there just uh, keeping the watchful eye on everything that's going on. Zach Cook looking at his score chart to see when uh, he's out again and uh, he'll see that it's actually going to be the next race, heat number five, where he'll go again with uh, Tom Brennan against uh, Josh Pickering and Lassa Fredrickson. Tobias Thompson there, no score first time out, I'm sure he'll be disappointed with that, but uh, chance to put that right very shortly. As the tractor spins around and uh, moves some of that uh, red shale from the out back towards the in. And here's Josh Pickering doing a little bit of adjustment. Uh, he's out in the next race, heat number five. 
Lasse Fredriksen already with his uh, yellow helmet on, ready to go. One of the few Norwegians who are racing uh, at the moment in uh, British Speedway. Josh Pecker in there. A little undecided at the end of last season what uh, his racing calendar was going to be. I think he hoped to go to Poland but uh, it didn't pan out and uh, so uh, it was the Monarchs game that uh, he could come back in and pick up that uh, number one spot as Craig Cook moved away to Workington. So we've got two tractors uh, in action at the moment and uh, there's Paco Castagna just uh, cleaning the goggles ready to go next time out. Paco of course uh, who was second in last year's 2023 Italian Championship but this year he's leading it I think it's three rounds done and uh, he has uh, the lead in that championship of course the biggest rival is probably Nico Cavatti but uh, Cavatti yet to get into his stride because of injury Richard Lawson there just uh, adjusting the dirt deflector and uh, Tom Brennan in shot just pacing the pits ready for the uh, Recall on to track once the grading break is finished. Busy weekend for Brennan, of course, in that under-21 final at Pada Beachy. He uh, was required to go to Poland the same day to race for his club. So it was a helicopter ride from Pada Beachy to Ostro to uh, represent his Polish side Gdansk in uh, the middle Polish league there. And uh, unfortunately, the helicopter ride uh, didn't pay dividends because poor old Tom didn't score in the, the uh, Polish league and I'm um, sure he was uh, gutted about that and uh, can't blame him really after having to rush from uh, one country to another within the space of about three hours. a famous face Martin Dugard the British champion about to 2000 I believe works closely these days with uh, Sam Hagen and uh, there's another famous face on the left of your picture John Davis great British international talking to uh, Martin Hagen there so uh, lots of advice going Sam's way from uh, established speedway riders and of course grass track riders of the past and Sam just uh, brushing off a bit too much of the shale that he picked up after his little tumble up there on uh, bend number one with a bit of carb work there with uh, Ben Cook's bike and uh, Ben's helped there today by uh, Polish mechanic Yarek fresh tear offs going on the goggles key piece of racing equipment these days clear vision pull away that film in front of the uh, goggle to get a clear view so we still have uh, one tractor out on track just uh, smoothing out an area on uh, the inside of bend number one On screen there, the uh, club sponsors, Wessex Marine, who have uh, done such a lot, not only for the Pirates, but for many, many individual riders over the years, up and down the country in terms of British Speedway. David Adams, a regular here at uh, Pool Stadium, and of course a big supporter of uh, the British youth system. So uh, good to see that... Uh, they have the support of uh, a good big sponsor. 
So, uh, tractors away, two minute clock on and counting down, and riders on their way to the line. Tom Brennan in shot, closely followed by Zach Cook for the Pirates. And as we go to the gate, let's uh, have a look at the riding lineup. We'll go from gate number one with uh, Tom Brennan riding in red for the Pirates. Next to him in the yellow helmet for the Monarchs is going to be Lassa Fredrickson. Gate number three, blue helmet for the Pirates, Zach Cook. And on the outside starting position in white is Monarchs number one. He's going to be uh, Josh Pickering, of course. So the riders uh, gardening uh, feverishly in various places, trying to find that uh, sweet spot into which to slot that rear tyre for the best traction and getaway as they head towards bend number one. Cook and Brennan, of course, were 5-1 uh, as first time out. They're going to have to work hard in this race where Josh Pickering there on that outside starting position, no doubt looking to hunt them down or even make a great start and uh, lead all the way. So we bring the riders up to the line, starting Marshall encouraging uh, Josh Pickering up, Julie obliges, engine noise rises, takes a release and away they go to the first corner and uh, from the outside box it looks like Josh Pickering's made a good start Tom Brennan fills in to second place Zach Cook in third Lassa Fredrickson away adrift at the moment but I uh, think we're going to see uh, high wide and handsome riding here from uh, Josh Pickering he's a very very quick rider when he's at the front and uh, stylish with it so here he comes come past us with a good lead over Tom Brennan and Zach Cook with uh, Lassa Fredrickson some way at the back. So Josh doing a great job for the Monarchs here. Comes around Ben's uh, three and four, lap to go. Brennan and Cook look to have uh, accepted that it's gonna be better to stay there than try any heroics. And Josh Cook comes, Josh Pickering comes round to uh, round off the race. We'll call them home, white, red, blue, and yellow, white, red, blue and yellow with a shared heat. And there's Josh Pickering uh, on screen just having a look down at the uh, right hand side of the machine there. Hope that's nothing uh, too serious for Josh. But from the tapes to the flag there was only one race winner that time round and that was the uh, mighty monarch Josh Pickering. Obviously, uh, a little concerned about something there, the way he's uh, looking and feeling various parts of the bike. Let's have a look at the official result of heat number five. Good one for the winner in white, Josh Pickering for the Monarchs. Second place in red for the Pirates, Tom Brennan. Third in blue for the Pirates was Zach Cook. And a fourth finisher was Lassa Fredrickson. Points shared, three to each team. And after five heats, everything tied together again at 15 points to each side. 15 points to each side, time 58.47 for those who are interested. Chance to see the rerun and chance to see uh, Josh Pickering snaking away from the gate, but uh, with all the traction in the mid to outer of first bend, he makes those uh, wheels into line very quickly. And uh, once he's at the front, well, very little catching that man. So well done, Josh. John Brennan and Zach Cook uh, filling the minor place. No hanging about because we go now to heat number six. Riders coming onto screen for you. There they are, and the lineup across the gate in gate number one in white for the Monarchs is Justin Sedgman. Gate number two, red for the Pirates, is Richard Lawson. Gate number three in yellow, winner first time out, 
for the Monarchs was Max James. And gate number four, no score first time out, but uh, looking at make amends in the blue helmet colour for the Pirates, Tobias Thompson. So there we are, that's your lineup for heat number six. Everything to ride for, 15 points to each team progressively after five heats. Max James in uh, shot there, a young man from Sheffield who uh, rode a little bit at the end of last year in the National Development League for Leicester Lions, but uh, this year has made the big decision to step up and evidence his first race, good decision. Here we go then, tape's released, they're off to the first bend, elbows out and it uh, looks like it's Justin Sedgman who's uh, managed to get to the front, but a slightest to gap there sees Richard Lawson fire his way through past Sechi to the front. Max James again in points in third place and uh, Tobias Thompson he's going to have to do the hard work and I think this time round he may just about found the sweep on the inside of Max James. So Richard Lawson leads, Justin Sedgman second Tobias Thompson moves to third and Max James at the back sweep work on the first corner from uh, Richard Lawson after uh, being headed into the corner he found a lovely line through and he heads them home with uh, just a lap to go Richard Lawson out in the wide stuff ahead of Justin Sedgman and Tobias Thompson with uh, Max James plugging away but uh, not going to score we'll call them over the line red white blue and yellow red white blue and yellow with uh, Pirates taking an advantage there with a couple of uh, useful passes from Richard Lawson and Tobias Thompson. Here's Richard Lawson on screen, acknowledging the cheers of the crowd. And the official result comes your way, it looks like this. Race winner in red for the Pirates, Richard Lawson. Second place in white for the Monarchs was Justin Sedgman. Third in blue, Tobias Thompson for the Pirates. And fourth, Max James in yellow, no score for the Monarchs. 4-2 Pirates, 19-17 after six heats. Simon Humphrey Kennett, your referee in the box tonight and uh, on his left hand side Trevor Hunter the uh, SCB incident recorder Riders out on track as we head towards heat number seven and it's uh, Ben Cook Pirates captain he's in the red helmet colour as the clock counts down there approaching 1.40 to go Monarchs riders out as well and Sam Hagen just uh, in close attendance everybody coming up to the gate getting themselves in shot let's have a look across the uh, gate positions to see who's who riding in the inside starting position heat number seven red helmet for the Pirates Ben Cook next door in white for the Monarchs is Kai Thompson gate three blue helmet colour for the Pirates Sam Hagen and gate number four in yellow for the Monarchs is Paco Castagna so there we have the riders lined up no doubt uh, Sam Hagen looking to uh, keep his bum on the saddle for all four laps this time round Monarchs still putting up a good fight just two in it 1917 and a close up view there of the spinning wheels of uh, Ben Cook as he prepares to move into position at the gate for race seven. It's a head headshot there of uh, Ben Cook. And we pan out to see the uh, pirate skipper getting himself ready to go. So riders are slowly rolling up to the line. Sam Hagen, last one to get there. But all okay now. Green lights on. 
takes a release and away they go to the first corner and it looks like it's a good start from Ben Cook and finding some punches around the outside with Sam Hagen and that uh, unfortunately got a little bit of a block on because uh, Captain Cook didn't really realise he was there but here comes Sam Hagen Hagen using that outside line to uh, good advantage but it's uh, Paco Castagna's in there as well now Hagen comes past Castagna best race of the night can Hagen hold it together it uh, looks like he's going okay at the moment up front Ben Cook's away with the mixer Castagna on that inside line that's his favoured line on many tracks Hagen of course prefers that outside run you can't uh, do anything with Kako when he's on that inside line but they're side by side it's great racing here can Hagen find speed to pass Castagna maybe he can can he drop it down tight enough to run uh, Castagna off the line we don't know we'll have to call them home on the line it's uh, a close call but I think we're going to have to wait for referee Simon Humphrey Kennett to give us the outcome on that one but uh, brilliant speedway racing between Castagna and Hagen as the riders uh, came over the line in heat number seven no doubt about the winner Van Cook no doubt about last place Kai Thompson but we wait the official reserve verdict on uh, heat number seven maybe it went to Paco I don't know we'll uh, just have to wait and see So uh, it's going to be heat advantage to the Pirates one way or another. And there's your official result on screen. A win for Ben Cook, the rider in red. Three points to Ben. Second place just on the line there, Paco Castagna in yellow for the Monarchs. And uh, third place in blue went to Sam Hagen for the Pirates. Fourth finisher, Kai Thompson. Great racing between Paco and Sam there. 4-2 Pirates, 23-19. They lead after seven heats. Let's see if we can get that up on screen for you to enjoy again. As uh, Hagen and Castagna go hammer and tongs. Hagen on the out, Paco on the in. And uh, they're side by side for uh, nearly all four laps take some uh, courage and uh, bottle to do what these guys do and uh, the trust they have in each other is uh, absolutely outstanding so there they go there can be no more than what a foot between the uh, elbows of Hagen and Castagna as they pass and repass there in heat number seven Close on the line, close on the line. But uh, referee Simon Humphrey, Kenneth Humphreys goes with Castagna, and that's what we will go with. As you can see, the tractors are out, and whilst they're running around, we can just have a look at the gate statistics at the moment, with uh, gate two so far producing uh, three wins from the seven races competed. Uh, two from gate four and one each from three in gate one. But uh, early, early days yet early days but interestingly enough gate four producing the most number of points if not race wins here's your score chart as we uh, complete seven races Richard Lawson with uh, two unbeaten rides so far to Tobias Thompson with one Tom Brennan paid five Zach Cook paid five Ben Cook five Sam Hagen one and Max Perry two over with the Monarchs Five points for Josh Pickering, one and one for Lassa Fredrickson, Kai Thompson just the one, Paco Castagna two battling points in the last race, good work from Justin Sedgman on five, Max James three and Connor Coles for two. So uh, Josh Pickering, Justin Sedgman doing uh, the hard work for the Monarchs at the moment and uh, putting the bigger scores on the board but lots of uh, positive signs as well 
from uh, Paco in the last one. Max James earlier on. And maybe the Pirates with 23-19 are just starting to flex their muscles as uh, the meeting progresses. Richard Lawson in shot there with uh, Martin Satchel. Looks like they may well have changed the carb jets there and uh, put the carburetor back together. Nice shot of Richard Lawson's ball spot there. He won't like that, but there we go. And uh, we look at the lineup here, and it looks like we're going to see uh, Lasse Fredrickson. He's in shot. He's uh, okay to come out again obviously uh, maybe there'll be a change at reserve we'll uh, find out very shortly because it looks like Max James was getting himself ready to go in place of Connor Coles so there we go that's uh, Josh Pickering there just uh, checking clutch adjustment constant machine main maintenance for all these boys Yeah, so uh, we can see uh, Max James just uh, limbering up, ready to go with uh, Lasse Fredrickson in this heat number eight. And uh, when you look on the programme, I think you, uh, if you're a Monarchs fan, you may be fancying your chances in this one because uh, Tobias Thompson with just one point and uh, Max Perry with two um, of... Uh, shown a little bit of fallibility and maybe Max James with good starting and uh, Lasse Fredrickson with the experience could uh, benefit in this one and uh, bring the scores a little bit closer together Connor Coles there and uh, he's in conversation with uh, Bellevue Aces or Colts rider Chad Wordsfeld uh, Chad Wordsfeld who lives locally So while we're talking about reserve changes, we uh, understand that Paul are going to make a swap as well and replace Max Perry with Sam Hagen. So uh, that may change the balance just a little bit. Let's have a look uh, when we bring up the full lineup on the screen for you. Pirates on one and three, Monarchs on two and four. And two reserve changes in Heat 8. Of course, no tacticals allowed in KO Cup fixtures. So you uh, really can only make alterations through the reserves. And uh, first time John Campbell has done that. And uh, he's brought Max James into the equation. Here's your full lineup for Heat number 8. Riding in gate number 4. In the white helmet for the Monarchs is Lassa Fredrickson. Riding in red for the Pirates, red helmet is Tobias Thompson. Riding out of gate number two in yellow for the Monarchs is Max James. And riding in blue out of gate number one for the Pirates is Sam Hagen. So there we are, that's your amended lineup for heat number eight two reserve changes in there with uh, Sam Hagen coming in for the Pirates Max James for the Monarchs so finally balanced this uh, first leg quarter final Pirates and Monarchs Monarchs doing well many people would have thought that it mean a little bit different score wise but uh, everything to ride for as we look at heat number eight And down goes Sam Hagen on the first bend. A couple of times. The race continues. No, it doesn't because the race has now been stopped. Uh, there's some confusion here. The riders think the race has been stopped. There's, there's been no official red flag. And... Uh, I think we just have to wait really and uh, see the outcome of the referee's decisions. 
it may well be that as a result of Sam Hagen falling, Max James was also catapulted towards the uh, fence and came down. And uh, if we can perhaps get it uh, back onto screen for you, it may give us a clearer picture. But uh, no red lights came on, although uh, there were red flags being waved. So um, a lots of confusion in this one. Let's see if we can uh, take them around the bends one and two and uh, actually decide what happened. Here we go in rerun. Pirates make the gate, I think. And yeah, as uh, they go into the corner, Sam Hagen comes down and Max James takes avoiding action and uh, spins out towards the fence. So we're looking at uh, exclusion lights. There are none showing at the moment. And uh, Tobias Thompson carried on as if uh, nothing had happened. So, uh, as I say, we haven't had the official call yet. So uh, we wait and see what the decision is going to be. Four pirate faces looking over the advertising hoardings there. Left to right, it's uh, Richard Lawson, Zach Cook, Ben Cook and uh, Max Perry. And there's Tom Brennan out uh, just having a look at the track. He's uh, due to come out again in uh, the next race, heat number nine. But we need to uh, sort out heat number eight before we can go any much further. Good crowd tonight. Let's put uh, some quizzical looks at the moment. And uh, we just uh, wait to hear how uh, the referee's seen that. wonder how many of these people have been coming since 1948. Well, we've now got the bizarre situation of the exclusion lights all coming on together. All four exclusion lights on together. And now even more bizarrely, they've all gone out. So apologies for the delay as uh, we wait to find out how the matter is going to be resolved. But currently the clerk of the course is in the referee's box. Almost looks as if the um, rule book's being uh, thumbed through, doesn't it, there? Well, again, apologies for uh, lack of information. Uh, we will obviously bring that to you as soon as we can, but uh, rather than uh, me bumble on saying very few
few meaningful things. We'll just uh, let you have some stadium shots. Now let's go to Nigel. Okay, so I don't know if you've caught that uh, through the ground microphones. There's an electrical fault which is affecting the red lights at the moment. So the decision has been uh, made to take the interval now. So uh, interval is going to be taken now to give the electrician and track staff chance to rectify the red light fault. So whilst we uh, take the interval, let's give you some uh, past action of a meeting here at Paul Stadium against the Edinburgh Monarchs. Here we go, Heat 13, sponsored by Global Heating. In gate one, it's Richard Lawson for the Pirates in red. In gate two, Paco Castagna. He comes in as a rider replacement in white for the Monarchs. In gate three, Steve Worrell in blue for the Pirates and in gate four Josh Pickering in yellow for the Monarchs Start Marshall Leaf and away we go it's the Pirates boys out front and as I said Pickering is going to find himself some drive on the outside not quite enough to get himself alongside Lawson Lawson's had to shut off a little bit because he found a bit of driving. Stevie Worrell was out front. They're now doing a bit more of a team ride, but Pico is going up the gap. What a move from Josh Pickering that is. But he's then gone too high and too wide. He's now coming back up the inside of Lawson. This is some entertaining racing, ladies and gentlemen, provided by Josh Pickering. Lawson goes back round Pickering. That's the third pass in two and a half laps. Pickering is not giving up here. I don't know whether Steve Worrell's holding up Lawson, but Lawson's had to go wide to try and stop Pickering getting out onto that faster line. He's learned his lesson. It's a five wide in favour of the Pirates. Blue, red, yellow and white. It's a come over the line. What an amazing race that was. It's a 5-1 heat score in advantage of the pirate in the favour of the pirates. As you can hear, the race winner in shot. Proud appreciating that one. Here's the confirmation of the Heat 13 result. It's a win for Steve Warren in blue for the Pirates. In second in red, his partner in crime. Richard Lawson, the rocket man, in third was Josh Pickering, all action stuff from him, and in fourth was Paco Castagna. Well, there we are, that was a little bit of uh, 2023 action for you, and uh, as the tractor goes round doing its thing and the electricians get their screwdrivers into action, we're going to bring to you a little bit of 2024 action when the Pirates took on the Cheetahs here on Good Friday. In gate one is Sam Masters for the Cheetahs. He's had a disappointing night by the way Sam Masters goes. Gate two is the unbeaten Rocket Man in red for the Pirates. In gate three in yellow is the R charging, ever charging Scott Nichols for the Cheetahs. And in gate four, the new Pirates captain in blue, Ben Cook, who won last time out. So here we go then, heat 13 is the big one, and away he goes, Rocket Man off the inside, but alongside him was Sam Masters, and Sam gave him a little shove and nearly allowed Nichols back up the inside. Ben's now got Nichols, good test with Nichols goes round the outside of Cook. Cook has not shut off, he's gone up back up the inside. Rocket Man has gone up the inside of Masters. Masters has dived back up the inside of the Rocket Man. The Rocket Man's coming back up the inside of Masters. Whoa! This is good racing, ladies and gentlemen. Now Ben Cook's having a little look up the inside. 
Masters managed to shut the door, going back into three. Kirk's not letting this one go. The Rocket Man's gone at the front. Ben Cook is still all over Sam Masters. This is not gone, I'm telling you now. He come round to the checkered flag. It's a big one from Ben round the outside. Oh, and he makes it. I think he gets up. The pocket rocket absolutely got out of the dirt and twisted that throttle and rode it like he stole it. Does he get up? Does he get up? Does he get up? Yes, he gets up. Here's the confirmation of the 13 result. It's a win for Richard Lawson in red for the Pirates. In second was Ben Cook, and what a ride that was. Half a wheel for him in blue. In third was Sam Masters in white, and in fourth, Scott Nichols at the back. Unusual for him. It's a 5 1 heat advantage to the Pirates. Well, the uh, spies are out, as you can see, because uh, underneath that bobble hat is uh, Plymouth team manager. Gary May, uh, no doubt uh, looking on to see what uh, the Pirates are up to this week because he comes here next Wednesday night bringing his Plymouth Gladiators to the stadium in the uh, rearranged BSN fixture. The uh, original one rained off like so many meetings this year uh, but uh, it's going to be staged next Wednesday and uh, the following Wednesday Pirates will be taking a trip to Oxford in a another rearranged BSN fixture so uh, whilst the BSN series Southern was expected to have been concluded by now uh, that's not actually been the case because of the weather and so uh, the whole series really has been rolled on probably by a month or so so we look down into uh, pit lane there and uh, we have all the wise men working together there's Max Perry now Interesting, isn't it? Max wears glasses, and he actually wears glasses whilst he's racing. And uh, he was uh, telling us that uh, he has to uh, have special goggles or uh, choose his goggles very carefully to fit over the glasses. Uh, and that means he has to also have a very special aperture on his racing helmet so that the goggles fit into it. So uh, not many people ra race with goggles on these days. I can't really think of anybody else to be perfectly honest although one person perhaps we should mention and uh, we mention it with the most reverence is John Tiger Louie John Louie who recently passed away a uh, fantastic uh, GB in England racer he used to race in glasses as well so uh, Max is following in the footsteps of uh, one illustrious rider there here's uh, Ben Cook and uh, Tom Brennan together chatting with the uh, track supremo there terry the track and uh, no doubt asking uh, terry to do it in a certain way or terry asking them how they want it and uh, i'm sure that uh, if he can he will oblige with uh, the uh, connections that he has there at wolverhampton and uh, the new shale or uh, shale that has been imported from the old monmore green stadium more goggle work from uh, Zach Cook there, just uh, checking through, he's got a clear vision. And sucking the old red ball, that'll uh, certainly give him wings. <coughs> Wessex Marine again to the fore on, uh, on the hat there. Wonder why they wear them reversed with a peak at the back. Him and his brother seem to do that a lot. Must ask them one day why they do that. Messrs Sedgman and Lawson there uh, discussing uh, how things are going. Sedgman, of course. Uh, not had too many meetings with Edinburgh, but has uh, picked up a few guest bookings around the place. He uh, carries a useful average, and when uh, some of the top boys uh, are absent for whatever reason, uh, he's quite a popular man to go to, to uh, step in and uh, put on a show. And uh, invariably, he does just that, not only for the Monarchs, of course, but for whoever he's representing on the night.
probably a little bit warmer back in Australia than it is uh, here in the UK at the moment and I dare say a darn sight drier as well so uh, Simon Humphrey Kennett there the referee uh, in the pits in discussion with uh, Alan Hickson there the man who's just put his hand down clerk of the course Nigel Leahy the presenter just uh, stood behind them and uh, behind him Midlow of course uh, considering all the options Edinburgh, of course, a team very much uh, like Paul in some ways with uh, concerns over the stadium. Their stadium, of course, uh, at one stage under threat, but uh, they've secured uh, a lifeline for the time being. Pirates, of course, in the same boat, uh, happily running in 2024, but uh, still with a number of questions over the availability of the stadium to them with ongoing discussions taking place uh, all the time as to uh, how Speedway can be kept operating here at Paul Stadium. Really sad if uh, an established club like Edinburgh or Paul were to uh, have to say it's the end of the day. Now I'm uh, hoping you can hear Nigel Leahy in the background explaining what's happening. Uh, it needed to be conveyed to the staff exactly how it will work. We will continue, but uh, in place of the red lights now, uh, or if, as well as the red lights, which is always the case, we have our red flag marshals. If the uh, referee requires to put the red lights on, he will in fact put the uh, red light on, on the disqualification lights, along with all four disqualification lights in order to make sure that uh, it's very visible to all the track staff, they won't be able to miss that. So in place of the red lights, all of those tower lights will go on up ahead of the starting gates. So uh, that's how we'll show the flag marshals to show the red flags, and the riders will be paying attention to the red flags as usual. Alright, so I can also tell you that uh, heat number 8 will be restarted. It'll be restarted with two riders only, with the exclusion of Sam Hagen, uh, who is a fallen in heat number eight, and Max James, who was not under power when the red lights were activated. Okay, well I wonder if you uh, heard the gist of that, and if you didn't then I'll relay it to you. There is a fault with the red stop lights around the circuit. Uh, the meeting is going to continue, but the referee, clerk of the course and riders have been uh, agreeing on a procedure so that if the red stoplights are needed to be activated, they, uh, the, they, the riders and the track staff will know the procedure to follow. It does involve all four of the disqualification lights at the starting gate. Let's hope we don't actually have to get that into operation. Further to that, uh, heat number eight, and uh, a decision has been made on that. The decision was that uh, the race was stopped in the interests of safety. Sam Hagen uh, excluded for the cause of the stoppage. And Max James also excluded, not under power at the time of the stoppage. So it means heat eight goes with just two riders which will be Tobias Thompson in red for the Pirates, Lassa Fredrickson in white for the Monarchs. So we're going to have an unusual 3-2 uh, heat score. That will get all the mathematicians and statisticians uh, flustered, no doubt. And anybody who does forecasts or predicts the score will probably be tearing their hair out at that. 
you need it to resolve quite clearly, which is a core issue. Heat and break will get restarted, the referee's on his way back up to the box. So we uh, do appear to have the tractors clear of the circuit. We have the medical staff returning to their positions and uh, very shortly we'll be having a match race for heat number eight. Not sure I've ever seen uh, the uh, meeting continued with, uh, after the failure of the red lights, but uh, good that uh, all parties have found a way of making things happen. Be uh, very sad to have to uh, conclude after seven races, uh, particularly given the distance that the Monarchs have travelled to be involved in this fixture. So as long as uh, everybody is happy and uh, it's safety first, then let's hope that we can get through the racing without uh, need to revert to those emergency procedures. Tapes are down, so uh, one step forward, I suppose. Just reminded that uh, it's Grand Prix time, of course, uh, kicks off at the weekend over there in Croatia with the uh, first Grand Prix of the season. And uh, who's betting on Mr. Schmarslik uh, losing his title? And not many, I would have thought. He seems to be imperious, does he not, in his racing? And uh, even in qualification, if he's not uh, top dog, then he finds a way to make semi finals and finals. So good luck to him and good luck to all the riders who are competing in the uh, GP series in 2024. So the good news is, as you can see on screen, we've got riders back on track, just the two this time. Lassa Fredrickson, who's uh, representing the Monarchs in white on screen there. And uh, Tobias Thompson, who's lining himself up in gate number eight for this one. So. Across the gate, white, gate four, Lassa Fredrickson for the Monarchs. And in gate three, red, Tobias Thompson for the Pirates. Let's see what happens. Plenty of gardening going on there and uh, Tobias Thompson really close to that centre line. Perhaps he's found a spot there that uh, hasn't been used before and he thinks that's the best place to be. So here we go, looks like uh, we're more or less ready for action. Green lights on, tapes are up and away they go to the first bend and uh, Lassa Fredrickson makes the best start there ahead of Tobias Thompson. Now what can Thompson do? Let's, uh, let's see if he's up to chasing down the Norwegian. Fredrickson goes wide, Thompson goes uh, pretty close on the line there. Uh, close to Fredrickson but Fredrickson uh, gets things back under control and uh, looks like he's now starting to put a little bit of a gap between him and the Pirates number two. A 
and away we go with Lassie Fredrickson just uh, holding station there nice and tidy round bends three and four Thompson is chasing trying to uh, get in touch but uh, I have to say it looks like Lassie Fredrickson has got things more or less under control Thompson goes for a big one at the end but I don't think it's going to pay off or is it? Well commentators curse what did I say uh, and Thompson's in the fence so <laughs> there we go all action during and after again it's too close to call I think uh, I have to say that I thought that uh, Lassa Fredrickson had done all the hard work but well Tobias Thompson's coming round and uh, it would appear that he thinks that uh, he's won the race I hope this donut isn't in vain, Tobias. Is it necessary, I ask myself. Well, he's an entertainer, if nothing else. As I say, I just hope that all of his uh, exuberance isn't uh, in vain. Let's see if we get the official result on screen for you as soon as possible. And the man is right to celebrate because the race win goes to Tobias Thompson in red for the Pirates. And he headed home Lassa Fredrickson in white for the Monarchs. 3-2 heat advantage to the Pirates. 26 and 21 the aggregate score. 26-21 and uh, well, what can you say about that? I thought that had gone the way of Fredrickson on the last bend, but uh, determination pays and over the line for a Pirate race win. His first, of course, in the colours of the Paul Pirates. So on screen for you now, the rider in white there just coming up to the tapes. Here's of course Justin Sedgman. And uh, it's going to be uh, a change I believe in yellow as well, but we'll just check that out. The moment we're showing that as Max James. So across the gate riding in blue is Zach Cook for the Pirates out of gate number one. Riding in white out of gate number two for the Monarchs is Justin Sedgman. Riding in red out of gate number three for the Pirates is Tom Brennan. And riding out of gate number four in yellow for the visiting Monarchs is Max James. Riders just settling there at the line. Max James, of course, who was uh, unfortunate, I think, to be uh, excluded in the last one for not being under power, gets his chance to put the record straight uh, immediately afterwards. Heat number nine as he comes to tapes with his partner, Justin Sedgman, for the Monarchs. Tom Brennan digging in there, looks at the clock, there's about 15 seconds to go until he has to be uh, on point, ready to go. Riders in line, engine noise comes up, green lights on, tapes are released and away they go to the first corner. And this time round it's uh, Justin Sedgman who bites the dust, the Pirates uh, are away, the race has been stopped the new race procedure the new race procedure has worked and uh, I really hope that it's Justin Sedgman down on bend number one there uh, who hasn't come to any harm and uh, good to say he's up on his feet and it uh, looks to be a-okay so uh, unsatisfactory start is called and a restart will be run with all four riders all four riders for the restart. There looks to be something running out of 
Sedgman's engine around the ignition box area. Perhaps a little fuel overspill, but uh, there we go. That's uh, liquid on the track now. So Justin just uh, getting himself sorted out. First aid guys there in attendance just to uh, make sure that there's nothing totally serious there. And uh, Josh Pickering is going to be the uh, international rescue to bring uh, Pickering back onto uh, Pickering's bike back into pit lane. And it's not going to fire for them. Oh, yes, it is. There we go. So back into the pits and uh, a few minutes. Oh, sleeves up. So uh, maybe he's got a little bit of a, a scold or a burn. And that looks like one of those uh, burn packs that they're uh, just freeing up there for Justin. So, again, okay, we come to a break in proceedings. Sorry about that. But... Uh, as it is, things are uh, taking a bit of a turn for the worse tonight in terms of timing. But uh, please bear with us. We'll do our very best to uh, keep relevant information coming your way. And uh, in the meantime, can we just draw your attention to the broadcast messages across the bottom of the screen in terms of streaming and sharing. So we now have a team meeting by the look of it with the Monarchs trying to uh, sort out Justin Sedgman's bike. Looks like uh, former British champion Neil Evitts there down on his knees just by Justin Sedgman's bike. We've uh, panned away now that uh, 1976 was it? Neil Evitts was the British champion. 1986 something with a six on the end still involved obviously Here's Max James had a very interesting evening race win last place exclusion and a restart so uh, he'll be getting to know the uh, 299 metres of Paul Stadium pretty good and meanwhile Justin Sedgman still there on uh, bend number one and uh, again his uh, forearm there left forearm having some either strapping or plaster attached to it so I hope that's not too serious and uh, doesn't take Sechi out of the meeting but uh, no doubt stinging him a bit at the moment and uh, there we go there's a view as the uh, riders come back to pits and uh, yeah something just on the inside of uh, the left arm there which is troubling Sedgwick at the moment but let's hope that uh, he can grit his teeth and uh, get going again in just a couple of minutes time good team spirit though amongst the uh, Edinburgh boys they've uh, all been there every time there's been an incident to uh, check on their uh, colleagues and compatriots to make sure that uh, they're hunky-dory yeah. Neil Evitz with the beard there just on the right of shot <laughs> Ben Cook there just checking on uh, Justin Sedgman well, we said this before you know these boys they may be on uh, opposite sides uh, in match competition but they do know each other very well off track and uh, they travel a lot together and uh, there's a good camaraderie between uh, most of the riders in Speedway because you've got to have trust in your uh, racing opponents and uh, I think it does show through when you get these boys together that they do believe in one another 
So the two minute warning has uh, reactivated and uh, great that we've got all four guys coming back to the line. Paul Pirates riders in view there. They'll be a bit disappointed because of course they made the best of the break in the uh, first running of heat number nine. Time to do it all over again. But uh, how often in Speedway do we see that uh, when a race gets stopped and a race position gets altered in its restaging? Can it happen again in heat number nine here? Well, quite possibly. We'll soon see because Zach Cook returns to gate number one in blue for the Pirates, Justin Sedgman White in uh, gate number two for the Monarchs. Then it's Tom Brennan in red gate three for the Pirates and Max James in the yellow from gate number four for the Monarchs. Second attempt then to get heat number nine underway with the riders uh, digging for victory. Certainly uh, that Cook is on that inside box there. And across the gate, the riders just uh, settling themselves. Looking to pick that uh, ideal sweet spot in which to place that back wheel. Twenty six twenty one in favour of the Pirates, five points to the good at the moment. How's it going to stand after this one? Let's go racing, heat number nine. Well, it's going to go the way of the Pirates by the look of it because uh, a great bolt out of the inside gate from Zach Cook followed round and uh, into the lead by his partner Tom Brennan. We're Justin Sedgman maybe feeling that arm a little bit. Well, he's running third at the moment with uh, Max James at the back eating the dirt. So round they come. Tom Brennan looks over his shoulder. He'll uh, see it's his team partner tucked in behind him. Zach Cook having to keep moving and uh, Cook looks behind just to see what's happening and uh, you'll see it's uh, Justin Sedgman still pressing on, still uh, running tight around the inside line. But with a lap to go, Brennan out front and uh, clearing off into the distance and leaving uh, Zach Cook just to keep uh, tidy and sweet around the final two bends. Let's call them home, red, blue, white and yellow. Red, blue, white and yellow for a maximum heat win for the Pirates. The second of the evening for that pairing of Brennan and Cook. And there they are on screen, side by side. Could be wheelie time. It is wheelie time. Sharp starting and uh, Nice and uh, steady from the Pirates to take Heat 9. Tom Brennan in red, your race winner for the Pirates. Second in blue for the Pirates was Zach Cook. Third in white, Justin Sedgman for the Monarchs. And fourth finisher was Max James for the Monarchs. 5-1 in favour of the Pirates. It's fifth, sorry, 31 to the Pirates, 22 to the Monarchs. 31 and 22. Nine races gone. Here's the start of heat number nine again. Cook away very quickly, and uh, he was followed in rapid style by Tom Brennan working around the outside. And uh, from there on, it was uh, happy days for the Pirates as they saw off the challenge of Justin Sedgman. On to heat number 10, and uh, here comes. Uh, Pirates number one in uh, 2024 and uh, certainly in the two meetings so far he's uh, been in great form. It's Richard Lawson. Tapes down and riders up to the line and uh, across the gate on the inside starting position in the blue helmet it's Tobias Thompson for the Pirates after that uh, very entertaining piece of work in heat number eight. Next door, Paco Castagna in yellow for the Monarchs, gate number two. Richard Lawson rides out of gate number three for the Pirates in the red helmet colour. And on gate number four, in the white helmet colour for the Monarchs, is Kai Thompson. So there we go, that's the uh, lineup for 
your 10th race of the evening, 10th of 15 in the first leg of this championship KO Cup quarterfinal. Sponsored, of course, by Cab Direct. Wessex Marine Pirates, 31. Stella Monarchs, 22. And there's a close-in view of Tobias Thompson. Just, uh, just checking the... Uh, probably checking the fuel taps are on, ready to go. I wonder if that last ride where he pipped Lasse Fredrickson on the line will have uh, boosted his confidence. Uh, you'd have thought so, wouldn't you? He's got uh, two riders here who uh, I'm sure he'd be delighted to beat in Castagna and Thompson. Let's see what happens as they go to the first bend in heat number 10. Out the gate. It's Richard Lawson who's made the best of the start and Tobias Thompson has uh, made a reasonable effort round the inside but Kai Thompson... Uh, he um, moves to the outside tight. But uh, as we know, you've got to get tight on that inside line when Castagna's about. And uh, Castagna comes in side of Thompson and uh, takes him through. But uh, he battles back. There's Castagna with uh, one wheel, maybe two wheels on the grass. I don't think it's uh, a quite an excludable offence, but it's close racing with... Tobias Thompson working hard to try and find a way past Castagna. At the front of the field, Lawson's away with a mixture. Thompson's a safe second. Uh, the action really between third and fourth here with uh, Michele. Paco Castagna sneaking through to take third place. We'll call them home. Red, white, yellow and blue. Red, white, yellow and blue. Richard Lawson, third win of the night, in shot. Maintaining the Pirates' lead. Heat race, uh, heat 10, is a 3-3 race result. And we'll bring the official numbers up on screen for you very shortly. Just like that. Race winner of heat 10 in red is Richard Lawson in the red helmet colour for the Pirates. Second place was... Kai Thompson in white for the Monarchs. Third in yellow. Coming through from the back there was Paco Castagna in yellow for the Monarchs. And the unlucky man at the back, Tobias Thompson, fourth place. No score. 60.06 if you're interested in the time. Richard Lawson, three wins on the night. And... Uh, eight wins here this season unbeaten in all of his races lots more to do tonight I'm sure with heat 13 and heat 15 to come but uh, that's in the future we go now to heat number 11 this time round is Ben Cook and Sam Hagen for the Pirates and Josh Pickering and Lassa Fredrickson for the visiting Monarchs And here's your lineup for the race in prospect. Heat number 11, gate one in white for the Monarchs, Josh Pickering. Gate number two in red for the Pirates is Ben Cook. Gate number three in yellow for the Monarchs, Lassa Fredrickson. And gate number four in blue for the Pirates is Sam Cook. Uh, Sam, Sam Hagen. Sam Cook, where? showing my age. Sam Hagen, all action, Sam Hagen. Let's hope that uh, he can stick on the uh, on the saddle with uh, three rides and two falls. Uh, he'll be looking to make uh, a better fist of it this time round. So we're looking at uh, Sam Hagen there, just trying to find uh, a rut, place in which to plant the back wheel. Only nine points in it, so uh, Monarchs will be fairly satisfied at this stage. Uh, if they can peg it at that uh, going up to Scotland, then it'll be a really interesting second leg. 
at the moment. We've just got to try and get Josh Pickering to move. Scott Marshall's not really happy with him, so uh, Josh has to move over and, and he obliges. So we're ready to go then. Green lights up, but away they go to the first bend. And uh, Josh Pickering, good start, good, good start off the inside. Lasse Fredrickson getting into uh, all sorts of funny shapes around bend number one, almost taking Ben Cook with him. But uh, Cook recovers the situation. Frederick successfully down, and it leaves Sam Hagen at the back to try and reel in Lasse Fredrickson. No doubt about the fact that Sam Hagen's got speed, but is it controlled speed? Well, it doesn't look like it because Sam Hagen at the back is going to stop, I think, with an engine failure. Up front, well, Pico's away, and uh, when he's away, he's uh, really uh, unstoppable, certainly on this track, excellent rider. So we're down to three participants. Pickering leads it. Ben Cook runs second, and Lasse Fredrickson, an important third place there. Sam Hagen, a retiree. Over the line, white, red and yellow. White, red and yellow, which is a win for Josh Pickering. Pirates advantage at nine, slips down to seven. I don't know what happened with Sam Hagen. We may find out a little bit later on. But Josh Pickering, well, no lap of honour, but uh, certainly takes the spoils in that one. Here's your official race result with a win for the rider in white, Josh Pickering. Second in red was Ben Cook for the Pirates. Third, Lassa Fredrickson for the Monarchs. And the fourth finisher was Sam Hagen. 36 points to the home side, 29 to the visitors. Chance to see them uh, out of the gate again, and uh, Josh Pickering, well, lovely straight gate there to the first bend, tight down onto the inside line. Bit of fun between Fredrickson and Cook as they went round the first two corners, but uh, settled down and. Uh, the pirate skipper managed to secure second place, but Lasse Fredrickson, the valuable third for the Monarchs. So 4-2 heat advantage to the visitors. It's uh, 36 and 29 as we head off towards a heat number 12. Just look at some of those... Uh, ruts that uh, develop over the course of the meeting gate four there where the riders uh, move over ride over on a regular basis takes a bit of a clattering one way and another here's your gate statistics and uh, it looks like the middle two gates are uh, most productive this evening with uh, gate three producing four wins so far Gate two, three wins so far. And uh, across the bottom there, gate three with a total of 19 points. Gate four, 18. Gate one, 15. And gate two, 13. So a fair spread across the gates of the points achieved. Tractors out for a little bit of grading and uh, gives us a chance to look at the scores on the doors. Richard Lawson so far running with uh, three unbeaten rides. Tobias Thompson up and down, uh, two lasts and a win in there for four points. Tom Brennan, seven and one, nice and consistent. Zach Cook, six and two, also uh, consistent there. Ben Cook with seven. Sam Hagen, uh, just the one point tonight. He looked like he was going to score a lot more than that, but uh, not to be. And Max Perry with two rides and two points so far. Over with the Monarchs, Josh Pickering in the groove. Eight points from his three rides. Useful return, Lasse Fredrickson paid five points from his uh, four outings. Kai Thompson with three from three. Paco Castagna three and one from three, but uh, having to work like crazy to get those points. Justin Sedgman uh, on the downward slant by the look of it, three, two, one for six and three rides. Max James three from four. Connor Coles two from two. So that's the way the uh, scores look on the doors. There's the wonderful pirate flag and a little bit of uh, acknowledgement from the people 
behind the flag which uh, is in front of the grandstand on the home straight. Track to time, Rob Hayward. Rob Hayward, our uh, intrepid grandstand cameraman. Good to see Rob back after his uh, absence on Good Friday. This one of the uh, classic meetings of the season. How can you have a classic meeting after one meeting? I don't know, but uh, it was a good, no doubt about it. There's the tractor just uh, sliding around the uh, inside there, just uh, scooping up some of the circus show. Track staff here from uh, early on this morning. It's been a very pleasant day here in Paul. Lots of work going on on the track. Lots of waving going on in the stands. Pirate flag to the floor. I wonder how many of those guys are going to go home and uh, watch the stream again. There's the season ticket holders. No prawn sandwiches for them. No sandwiches at all for them, to be perfectly honest. And the crew who sit in front of the uh, referee's box and uh, give him grief, or her, if it's uh, one of our lady referees who take part. Doing well on the waving tonight. There's a lady who sells the programmes as you come in up there. Taking a person's the There we are. Between the Give us a wave for Pirate TV. Yes, uh, see the, the fans in the grandstand. Good to see uh, Stan and Val Vatcher in attendance tonight. They do so much for the Pirates through the uh, REF, Rider Equipment Fund. And uh, they were celebrating a right, diamond wedding right anniversary just uh, a week ago. One. So we lost the tractor into uh, the parking bay and uh, we can hear engine noise from the pits as the countdown clock shows about uh, 1 minute 40 for the riders in heat number 12. Those riders coming round to tapes and uh, in shot Max Perry. You can see in through Max's goggles we'll see his spectacles underneath there. It's, uh, just about pick out the uh, frames of his glasses, very uh, unusual but uh, obviously essential for him as he races. No changes to the programme that uh, we're advised of, so uh, looks like this with the Kai Thompson uh, just finding his way out of pit lane. Gate number one, we've got uh, Max Max James, sorry, yep, Max James on gate number one. He's in the yellow helmet for the Monarchs. Gate number two in red for the Pirates, Tom Brennan. Gate number three in white for the Monarchs is Kai Thompson. And gate number four in blue for the Pirates is Max Perry. Riders uh, settling into position there. All together now. Starting Marshall moves away. Green light on. Takes her up, but they go to the first bend with Tom Brennan making a nice straight start there from uh, his gate position and tucking in behind him. White and yellow, the uh, two monarchs. Uh, he'll be very happy, I would imagine, to square this heat off. Tom Brennan leads it, Kai Thompson second, Max James in third, and uh, Max Perry having to do the hard work for the Pirates at the back. Tom Brennan moving a little bit wider as uh, they scoot around the pits bend, He's taking it out uh, towards the fence. Kai Thompson steady in second. Max James is the rider under a little bit of pressure from Max Perry. Max Perry is getting closer to him, but uh, has he left his move a little bit too late? Well, he's closing in there. A bit of a 
jump from Max there and uh, maybe a little bit over eager. Let's call them home. Red, white, yellow and blue. Red, white, yellow and blue. And Tom comes down the back straight for uh, a round of applause from the guys in the grandstand. And he'll get a good round of applause from the people here in the grandstand as he comes through. There we go, the official result comes your way. Looks like this, win in red for Tom Brennan for the Pirates. Second place was Kai Thompson for the Monarchs. Third place, useful third place indeed for Max James with the Monarchs. And the fourth finisher there was Max Perry. Points three to each team. Progressive score 39 to the Pirates. Seven point advantage over the Monarchs on 32. 39 and 32 after 12 races. So uh, really nothing to uh, separate the teams. Monarchs working hard and uh, keeping the scores really in touching distance. Pirates, well, they'll be looking to try and uh, extend their uh, extend their lead as they uh, go for the last three races to try and take a decent advantage to Armadale at the uh, first Friday in May. Of course. When we get to Armadale, new averages will be in place. And uh, as it happens, there won't be any positional changes in either team when the May averages are in effect. But uh, some, teams, some teams are having to make just one or two alterations, but uh, not these two. So here we go, Heat 13, the big guns come to uh, play. And the Pirates with one and three and the Monarchs on uh, two and four. Looking across the gate, inside position in red for the Pirates unbeaten so far is Richard Lawson. He's in the red helmet colour. Next to him, he'll have uh, Monarchs number one, Josh Pickering. Eight points from uh, nine so far, so good work from Josh. White helmet, gate two. Blue helmet, gate three, Pirates captain, Ben Cook. And to gate number four, Good to see him back out on the track there, Justin Sedgman. Hopefully no problems with that arm. He's in uh, yellow and uh, starting position number four, I'd say. Starting Marshall is uh, tweaking the elastic. Back to the other side to uh, put the outer arm down. And there we go. Tapes secured. Starting Marshall tests the tapes. Uh, they obviously didn't go up very cleanly, so uh, that needs a little bit more work, I think, to uh, get those into proper functioning order. So, uh, another frustrating delay, I'm afraid. Apologies if your viewing pleasure is being uh, interrupted a little bit, but uh, if you are at home or on holiday or uh, as Scott Mitchell is in his hotel room, um, time to uh, open the mini bar or put the kettle on and uh, just have a very brief cuppa whilst the tapes are repaired and the riders uh, just take a few moments to uh, sort out a little bit of mechanical 
adjustment. Not that uh, Josh Pickering's bike probably needs very much adjustment. It seems to be uh, flying after the first uh, race this evening. So I uh, hope they don't tweak it too much. Otherwise, uh, Josh will lose his edge. But uh, there we go. I'm sure they're all uh, keen to find the uh, sweetest setup that they possibly can. We are looking into the visor of uh, Ben Cook. Not that you can see very much because those reflective visors uh, don't allow very much in the, through the glaze. John Campbell there just... Uh, doing a little bit of pacing I'm sure he must be delighted with the way things are going at the moment 32 points in the bag so far and uh, three races still to go and uh, every chance of taking a uh, good position back up to Scotland for the second leg Test number two, failed. Clark of the course, Alan Hickson there. Uh, quite an electrical genius in his own right. those gestures there from uh, Neil Mirdich it looks like we uh, might be moving to some sort of alternative starting procedure which on a night of some frustrations is only adding to the pain really but as they say it is what it is and uh, we have to just uh, accept the best situation that is uh, fair for all and safe for the riders and if that means uh, going to green light starts or flag starts then uh, so be it the applause is for a can of WD-40 Other lubricants are available. And there we are, your favoured footwear for a speedway rider. Daytona boot with steel shoe attached courtesy of Josh Pickering Wasn't like this in our day, was it, Martin? No, Neil. No, definitely not. We used to let them go with a bit of elastic and bicycle tube from the outside.
WD40 saves the day. There we go, a bevy of pirates all uh, looking on. Test number four. Oh dear. You can just see Josh Pickering thinking there. You can, you know, it wouldn't be like this in Australia. What time does McDonald's close? I don't know if you can hear the Benny Hill music in the I background, but... Uh, cool. So it looks like uh, we're going to get the riders to the line, but uh, quite how we're going to get them started, we'll have to wait and see. This is when transponders would have come in handy if they've been in use. So there we go. Uh, it, uh, sounds as if, and sounds as if it's actually going to be riders starting at the gate on the green light. Now, whether that means when the green light comes on or when the green light goes off, we'll have to wait and see. So let's have a try again. You've got to feel sorry for these guys. Richard Lawson in red, Josh Pickering in white, Ben Cook in blue and uh, Justin Sedgman in yellow. Which team manager has done the uh, better job of explaining the procedure to their riders? Well, that's... Uh, an interesting question we'll have to see in a minute when uh, the, the race gets going. I hope the meeting sponsors aren't an electrical company. Or if they are, they've probably found themselves a new contract for tomorrow. So we get the we get the guys. Well, we got two pool guys at the gate. Let's hope uh, let's hope we get away without any trouble. Here we go then. Green light on. All lights on. So unsatisfactory start. Is there going to be some sort of disqualification? The two, the two minute time allowance is back on. And we understand that there's going to be a warning, a caution for the rider in blue. So here we go with the uh, sprint from the pits. It's the London Marathon again, really, isn't it? But. Uh, here they come out, they come with their cans. Those, those fuel tanks only take a litre and a half of petrol, but not petrol, me, methanol. But uh, surely one lap round isn't going to be uh, draining the tank, is it? Okay, tighten the back wheel quickly, but, uh, well, 
on a night when we've had a lot of stoppages for uh, various reasons getting the thing underway is a priority I know it's an important meeting and all that but uh, let's see what happens when we go racing or attempt to go racing again here's, here's Ben Cook He's going to carry a warning. In case you needed to know again, Richard Lawson is for the Pirates on gate one. Josh Pickering's in white gate number two. Ben Cook is gate number three in blue and uh, Justin Sedgman in yellow off gate number four. So the riders are settling down at the line. How's this one going to go? Pinston, then, you're going to send Pickering bursts around the outside of Richard Lawson. Richard Lawson, well, almost skewers him, but uh, as it happens, uh, no damage. Pickering out in front. Richard Lawson running in uh, second place. Ben Cook in third. And Justin Sedgman is at the back. So points going to be shared in this one. Good work from Picco to get around the outside of Richard Lawson. 100% uh, try of Picco and uh, no prisoners taken there. Richard Lawson, well, still on the gas, but looking for a way through is going to be a, a big ask to get Picco from there. And they come down the back straight and uh, into the final two corners. Richard Lawson going on the wide route, but he's not going to make it. We'll call them uh, white, red, blue and yellow. White, red, blue, yellow. And that's a shared heat, as uh, you will appreciate. And here comes Josh. Deserves a round of applause. Pops a wheelie. Nicely done by Josh there. And your official result looks like this. It's a win for the rider in white. Josh Pickering for the Monarchs. Second place in red, Richard Lawson for the Pirates. Third in blue, also for the Pirates, is Ben Cook. And the fourth finisher was Justin Sedgman for the Monarchs. 3-3 heat score, 42 to the Pirates, 35 to the Monarchs, 42 and 35. So heat 14 and uh, we're going to have uh, this uh, unusual start again of course, green light comes on and when it goes off the riders uh, head off to the first bend. Paco Castagna in uh, shot there. Had to do a lot of work tonight for his points, uh, Paco, but we know that uh, he's uh, no slouch around that inside line, so uh, if you're racing him, you probably know where the best place to be is going to be. We've got the riders coming up to the line. Uh, Connor Coles, of course, has to come to the line for the Monarchs to take his compulsory third ride. And so we'll look across the gate to see who's who. On the inside styling position in white, that's uh, Paco Castagna for the Monarchs. Riding in a blue helmet colour out of gate number two. He's not had the best of nights so far. Let's see if he can uh, rectify that. Sam Hagen for the Pirates in blue. Gate number three, Connor Coles rides in yellow for the Monarchs. He's uh, two points so far. And uh, out on gate number four in the red helmet colour for the Pirates is Zach Cook. So there we have it, the uh, lineup for heat number 14 with uh, just seven points between the teams. Uh, Monarchs no doubt rubbing their hands at the prospect of going back to Armadale with just uh, that type of deficit to attack.
So we've got the riders uh, steady at the line. Green lights on and off. And uh, I've got to think that that's going to be an unsatisfactory start. And uh, I think it's also going to be a warning to one of the riders out there. This time, a rider in yellow gets a warning. Your rider in yellow receives a warning from the referee. So, uh, no surprise that uh, there was a call back. Uh, and this time, it's uh, Connor Coles who is deemed to have just slightly anticipated the release of the green light. So we go again in heat 14. And we go again with the lineup. Paco Castagna, Sam Hagen, Connor Coles and Zach Cook inside to out. Close up there on uh, Sam Hagen and uh, a little trench that he's trying to fill in. And uh, riders are just uh, composing themselves. That cook there just trying to find the sweet spot, but. Uh, just pull back a little bit and uh, waiting for uh, the inside gate to come forward first yeah I can imagine it's quite nervy for those riders out there they're used to uh, tape starts but this probably is out of their comfort zone to some extent let's see what happens when we go racing then in heat at number 14 Off they go to the first bend and it looks like Zach Cook's made a good start from the outside but uh, no, Paco Castagna has uh, done the business again from the inside and uh, creeps around the inside line. In fact, that time he's mid-track so uh, moved out a little bit. Zach Cook trying to force the pace. Sam Hagen in third. Connor Coles at the back but uh, Paco there established rider these days and uh, he should be able to ride this one home from here Zach will of course put the pressure on but uh, doesn't look like he's going to make uh, too many inroads into Paco and uh, there we go around the car park bend Zach Cook still chasing hard but no real inroads into Paco so uh, back straight time just a half a lap to go they come off heat 14 in the following way. It's a win in the white ahead of red, blue and yellow. White, red, blue and yellow. Paco goes straight back to Pitts. And we can give you the official score, official result of Heat 14 with Paco Castagna first over the line in the white helmet for the Monarchs. Second place in red for Pirates, Zach Cook. Third in blue for Pirates was Sam Hagen. And the uh, fourth man home was Connor Coles. Shared Heat, three points to each team. And progressively, the Pirates have 45 and the Monarchs have 38. So the Pirates will win the meeting tonight, but the question is, what will the difference be to take up to the uh, Armadale Stadium sh in uh, 10 days' time? Whichever way it goes, I'm sure the Monarchs will be uh, very, very pleased with their uh, work today. Um, it could be very close indeed, maybe even as little as three points, but maybe as much as 11. We'll have to wait and see how things uh, pan out over the course of heat number 15 and now as you can see we're in the pits there with uh, Tom Brennan putting the blue helmet camera on pretty certain that uh, it will be Richard Lawson in the red <coughs> uh, 
and uh, over with Monarchs well you can but guess that it's going to be uh, Josh Pickering and uh, perhaps Justin Sedgman or maybe even Paco Costana on the basis of that last ride there we are and Richard Lawson there just putting the lid on so that seems to confirm that uh, it's uh, Richard in red Tom Brennan in blue no real activity down on the Edinburgh side Josh still uh, working on his equipment but uh, it'd be an almighty shock if he wasn't going to be uh, going in this one just a question of whether he goes uh, white or yellow of course if Pirates have choice of gates in heat 15 <laughs> crucial could that be Just looking at that, I would uh, surmise that uh, it's going to be Paco, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Here's Josh just getting himself geared up, ready to go. Constant work on the bikes these days. Changing ignition, changing gears, changing carbs, not and uh, non-stop uh, work all the time not also, not also on the track but also in the pits and uh, good to have reliable support there helping out there's Paco and the Italian Stallion very popular rider around the circuit Another guy who will tell you uh, exactly what it's like and uh, if you don't mind a few four-letter words, Paco will chuck them in there as well for you just to add some colour. So we're getting news now. Richard Lawson is the rider in red and uh, Tom Brennan is the rider in blue. And for Edinburgh, Josh Pickering goes white and uh, Paco Castagna so there we are as uh, we surmised four riders for a very interesting and important heat number 15 and as you can see on screen Pirates are taking uh, one and three in uh, this crucial heat number 15 so Richard Lawson will have the inside gate Tom Brennan gate number three three thinkers there on the centre green watching on Thompson Perry and uh, Ben Cook and we're just waiting for uh, the fourth rider to uh, reach tapes meantime we'll give you the lineup with uh, Richard Lawson on gate number one for the Pirates he'll race in the red helmet colour racing in the white helmet colour gate number two for the Monarchs is Josh Pickering then in the blue helmet colour for the Pirates gate number three is Tom Brennan and on gate number four in yellow for the Monarchs yellow helmet of Paco Castagna so there we go 45 to 38 just the seven in it and uh, whichever way it goes now it's uh, guaranteed to be a very entertaining and uh, I would surmise a close meeting up there in uh, Bonnie Scotland when the teams go head to head again Paul of course would there be there as part of a mini tour because after Edinburgh they'll go on to Berwick the following night for uh, league action but in the meantime Heat 15 tapes released away they go and uh, to the first bend Richard Lawson has uh, made the business Paco Castagna's down on the first bend Tom Brennan comes round the outside of Josh Pickering 
and Paco Castagna is down on the deck. He isn't going to move and uh, the race has to be stopped. Sadly, from a Pirates point of view, when the Pirates had made it uh, into pole position. So we have to uh, wait on the referee now to uh, give an indication of how he felt that uh, went and uh, he gives an all four riders decision so there we go and uh, maybe that uh, is the right one and perhaps we can see on the replay in a minute uh, just what happened there and uh, here we go there's a chance to have a look uh, Paco Castagna there on the outside Mm, maybe feels a slight brush from Tom Brennan and uh, the experienced Paco decides that uh, it's time to get off so that's the way the cookie crumbles back they go to the pits and uh, as I say a little bit unfortunate if you're a Pirates fan but uh, if you were with the Monarchs you'd say yep right decision all four back and we get a proper four rider race to conclude the evening So we've had a fair few uh, incidents, stoppages and uh, restarts this evening and uh, with the time ticking up to somewhere near 10 to 10, uh, we'll probably be through by uh, 10 o'clock all things being equal. Let's have a look and see how uh, the gates are working out after 14 races. Well, let's first of all look at the points across the bottom and uh, you could throw a, uh, a blanket over those, 20, 22, 20 and 21. So uh, nothing really to choose there. And uh, probably indicates that uh, any of those gates could be the uh, plum position to be in for this particular heat. Two minute clock is uh, activated and uh, riders are coming out on track. A lot of hectic activity going on there in pit lane. As you can see, uh, Paco there was just uh, adjusting his helmet and uh, work going on to make sure that the bike's running at 100%. Uh, And we can now tell you that the two minute time allowance has been cancelled to allow Edinburgh riders a little, uh, Edinburgh's Paco Castagna a little extra time to get his equipment uh, sorted out after that tumble. And from that view it looks like Josh Pickering is going to be using every second that he can to uh, get the bike up to 100% uh, efficiency. Pirates at the line. They're going to have uh, a little bit of a wait, I think, there with the two minute time allowance uh, called off. And now the two minute time allowance is reactivated. We've got uh, Paco on the way, I think. We're just waiting for. Uh, Josh to appear from pit lane and uh, as he does we'll give you the lineup again cross the gate for heat number 15 gate one Richard Lawson red for the Pirates gate two Josh Pickering white for the Monarchs gate number three in blue Tom Brennan for the Pirates and gate number four in yellow is Paco Castagna so Paco up and OK, ready to go after his tumble. Richard Lawson there just uh, heading down to uh, Ben Four and turning around. Just uh, blowing a little bit of fresh air through the goggles. 
clear any misting that's in there at the moment. And we've got the riders now coming to settle at the starting line. Tom Brennan in shot there, just uh, moving forward. And here we go then, let's try again, heat 15. Through the, through the gate and looks in the way and now it's Pickering, Jason Lawson and uh, Tom Brennan now coming into play with Pakistan Castagna on the inside as always so Richard Lawson is going to have to uh, have highs in the back of his head here because uh, Josh Pickering will not give up the fight to one iota neither will Paco Castagna on Tom Brennan and Brennan I think has seen the danger and has moved to cover the inside position and probably sensibly thinks it might be wise to stay there rather than to try and uh, push too hard and uh, make a mistake which uh, could see him lose a valuable point. We come round now, it's going to be uh, a chequered flag, we'll call them home, red, white, blue, yellow. Red, white, blue, yellow. So Pirates uh, take a heat advantage in the crucial heat number 15 and extend their lead at the same time. But it's going to be a close one up at Armadale with just nine points between the riders. So here come the uh, riders round. Is the Pirates there on parade. They'll uh, come and talk to the crowd a little bit later on. Richard Lawson comes across, the important race winner in uh, heat 15. Josh Pickering as well. Here comes uh, Paco and uh, Tom Brennan. So, 49 to 40 is the final score. Let's uh, just uh, fill in the details for you here with Richard Lawson, the winner of heat number 15. Second place went to Josh Pickering in white for the Monarchs, third to Tom Brennan in blue for the Pirates. And uh, Michele Castagna, no points in the yellow helmet 49 to 40 was the score at the end of the day 49 40 and uh, well a very close and entertaining uh, evenings racing punctuated by some uh, delays for which we must apologize of course and uh, as you can see there the uh, pirates talking with the meeting sponsors and uh, the match result on screen at 49 to the pirates and 40 to the monarchs here comes the uh, main scorecard for you. Top of the order for the Pirates, Richard Lawson with 14 points from his five rides. Tobias Thompson's chipped in with four. Tom Brennan, well, he had 11 and one. Zach Cook, three, one, two, one, two. Eight and two bonus for Zach. Ben Cook, eight and one for Ben. Sam Hagen, lots and lots of work, but only paid three points on the night. Max Perry, well, riding to average at two points. Over with the Monarchs, congratulations, Jack, Jack uh, Josh Pickering, to head the score chart on 13 from five. Lassa Fredrickson, four and one from his four rides. Kai Thompson, five. Paco Castagna, six and one. Justin Sedgman, six. Max James, three, uh, correction, four and one. And finally, Connor Coles, two points for a total of 40. So there we go. That's your individual scorecard for the night. And uh, we see people leaving the stadium, no doubt happy with a win, but uh, will it be enough? Well, only time will tell. Join us uh, next time, if you would, on the live stream for Pirates TV when we... Uh, do battle with the Plymouth Gladiators next Wednesday in the BSN Southern Series. The next away meeting stream will be 
up at Edinburgh, the second leg of this quarter-final on Friday the 3rd of May. So it's time to bid you farewell and from the Pirates crew with uh, Rob Hayward on main camera, Paul Haig roaming around, myself Rob Dyer, stadium presenter Nigel Leahy, the producer and director Andy Haig and all of the graphics from Candy Soft and images by Paul Speedway and Taylor Lanning. We wish you a very pleasant and safe end of evening. Hope you've enjoyed what we've been able to present for you this evening. And uh, till the next time, my name's Rob Dyer, and I'll speak to you soon.